that's it. fine. But, uh, uh, Rory, thank you so much for coming on. That's uh, all right. Pleasure to speak to you and, and to pick your mind about all things music. So I'm glad that you've made a, some spare time out of your day to speak to myself. And uh, we're going to talk about all things music. Yep. And um, what's funny, just before we start, you are the first person on this podcast to be unique in this way. So there's a lot of people that have came on before you that have uh-huh. never done podcasts before. And they're a wee bit nervous, you know, they're not quite sure. A lot of them have actually said, oh, I wasn't sure if I was uh, going to have enough to actually say. And I said, don't worry about it. See, once you get talking, it's absolutely fine. Uh-huh. You're the first person. The, the only thing you were worried about was whether or not you could swear or not. <laughs> oh, of course. Hey, yeah. No, I don't care. I, I, I'd assume you'd have the questions and I can blame it for days. So but there's, a, a, there's, no, there's no rating on this, so you can swear as much as you want. It's fine. But uh, I so before we get started, how are you doing? Grand, I um, Just slowly getting back into the swing of things with gigging. Uh, Obviously, winter's a bit quiet, but you get the odd staff night out and like the random gig pop through. So it's it's all go now. Gigging every night apart from uh, Sunday and Monday, but not for religious reasons, just for letting my throat relax reasons, you know. Bye for rest. So, uh, Rory, going right back to the very beginning, where are you originally from? Where were you brought up? Uh, born in Inverness, brought up in Ellipool, and I haven't moved yet. Don't plan to. No. And... Uh, were you into music from a very young age? I'd say so, aye. Um, so my mum um, put me through these Gaelic singing competitions and stuff, so uh, competing very early in that, and uh, oh, just the usual, if you do a good job, you'll get a present sort of thing. So it's very like uh, beauty pageants in the US, you know, it sort of messes with your head, you know. But, yeah. uh, but no, I like the CDs that we used to have would be like Dr. Hook and stuff and I wasn't a fan of like the slow love songs I thought they were a bit yeah. but like the weird songs like a Freaker's Ball and Penicil and Penny and that I thought whoa so but nice. yeah. your music influence like like most people probably coming from their, their parents early on but yeah. um, what age were you when you discovered your own your own musical taste and what were the, some of the bands that you were discovering Eh, uh, it'd probably be, like, because nothing, I never had a particular genre I liked. I mean, I'd listen to a lot of Scottish music because I was learning the accordion. Yeah. But, like, um, it would be, like, Kerrang on the telly and there'd be, like, System of a Down and stuff like that. And I just thought, oh, that's, that's bizarre, you know? Uh, yeah. Just And then I always thought, I wonder if there'd be a way to mix the two later on I'm still figuring things out and how to go about it because I'm playing by myself you know Yeah. but it's no funny, funny when you say that though because I, I've seen you play live mm-hmm. and uh, just when you compare the two obviously this for a down what they're known for is the fact that their time signatures are all over the place which is what makes it interesting uh-huh. and that's kind of the sim- similar to yourself I, I can kind of see where you've got the influence there uh-huh. from that no, I just, I like to mix things up, you know, because the system I use has, like, backing tracks and things, but I think it's a lot better programmed it so that the drums are happening with the left hand, so... And that's yeah. why it's very difficult when people try and play with me and things are just doing this and they're looking at me like, what the fuck, what are you doing? Like, it's just just the way it goes, you know, I'm trying to get them to join in, but it's tricky for people I mean, to play with me, like... There is something there is something cool about playing with a band. See if you get another two or three guys mm-hmm. and you all get on and, you know, you are all on the same musical page there is something cool about playing in a band but having played solo as well see when you've got no restrictions that's mm. also cool oh it's hi just, yeah depends what you want yeah, but uh, no. why the accordion why not the drums or the the guitar or that what, what drew you to that instrument um so a lot of my family are like uh, really well-known pipers like high up in the piping world and that and there was sort of a uh, sorry, is this camera falling over now? <laughs> there we go. I thought you were No, um, no, no, it's me. I, uh, so my mum wanted to learn the accordion and they started doing lessons in Liverpool through the Fish, which is like a big organisation that like teaches kids like Scottish instruments at a young age and does workshop and things. So 
she wanted to learn and she booked two spots because they were hard to like they were hard to get yeah. so I was getting the shit kicked out of me by my older brother and sister and I wanted out the house and my mum was like who wants to come with me and I was like I'll come with you so just because of that the way it went and there was no there was no accordions the first day we just did scales and tables da -da 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 -da. and then uh, once I got the accordion I loved the left hand I, I didn't really care about the right hand you know so I like just learning chords and with the wee accordions you get at the start they're only a size 48 so you're quite limited with what chords you can do but I like sitting as I said listening to Doctor Hook and stuff from crap like new metal like even Limp Biscuit and stuff like that just trying to do it in the box yeah. so I love the left hand uh, I, I messed about with guitars and things and I fart about with them just now but yeah. I use the drums as a sort of therapy session and I'm <laughs> reading you know but uh, no not to the point where I can play them properly and the accordion just clicked it just felt yeah. e not easy but like uh, just it, it took less time to learn than anything else it was obviously meant to be but I think that's obviously what you're saying that you've uh, I mean you're kind of coming from maybe a bit of a rock background but you're approaching an instrument that's not normally associated with that type of music, so that's why you end up creating maybe a bit more of a unique sound. Aye, yeah. Well, there's bands, um, I think they're called the Steven Seagulls, and they do, like, uh, double bass and accordion, and, like, they come in, in uh, like, overalls and stuff and lawnmowers and things, and they start doing yeah. covers of songs. and Just blow, like, hearing that unique sound... Like with those well known songs and that, I think it just changes the dynamic of it. I'm not trying to copy anyone, but like there's definitely, you always think you have a unique idea, but I think you're picking up stuff you've listened to in the past. And yeah. you know, the version I do of Thunderstruck and that is probably loosely based off that because the banjo's in it, but a lot of it's based on the pipe version as well. And then I'm trying to sing it like your man at the end, but yeah. uh, it's tri tricky, like. Uh, it's maybe quite hard to recreate Brian Johnson's vocals. <laughs> oh, totally, yeah. Especially on a Tuesday night when you're met. Um, you know, I go to a gig on a Tuesday and there's like, especially this time of year, it's so quiet. I'm like, right, I'll just, I'll go nice and canny. And then before you know it, I'm screaming away at the second yeah. song and there's only four people in the bar. <laughs> so, so mm -hmm. I, mean, I, 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 similar to your, play a lot of the pubs and stuff. Do, yeah. do you like playing pub gigs? Or is it do I what, sorry? bad things? Do I what? Do you enjoy playing um, pub gigs? Oh, I yeah, totally. Like, because um, like we've gone on tour and played, you know, a few places and that, and I played the Badlands and that, and the, the sound is cool. But like, see the audience interaction, especially if they're not enjoying it. That's when I have the most fun. You know, if people are trying to leave, if they have yeah. to get up early the next day, I, like, because a lot of people in Liverpool are doing the North Coast Five Hundred, yeah. so they have to like get up sharpish and stop drinking. But if I notice they're leaving, I'll grab one of the lights and go, Oh, where the hell are you going? And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we've got to get up early. And I'm like, I will sit down, the gig's not over. I'm joking, but like my face isn't joking, so they, they end up... Yeah, I love uh, pub gigs and that. I don't like getting my equipment broken. Yeah, you know, like people standing on wires and, you know, the accordions are expensive and people come up with booze asking for fucking wagon wheel and shit like that. So, so you've got to try and stay positive and like keep the energy good but like when you're seeing your equipment break you're like oh kind of hell to me it's literally you know that song you learn on the keyboard it's that with chords and the song is actually quite a nice song but it's just i don't know overdone so i say to people you know especially for their nimberness and they're not enjoying what i'm doing it's like well just go to any other pub you know so yeah. and listen to wagon wheel and a guitar if you want i'm not i'm not bending over for anyone like depends what it's like what I was saying was, um, when you're playing the pub gigs, do you do a combination of original songs with covers, or is it purely just cover songs to entertain the punters? For now, it's covers, but it's weird. Like, the songs I'm writing, it's more for, like, the second album. So the first album's not out yet, but it's done. And yep. the second album's going to be more originals and that. I mean, I play original tunes and things, you know? But yep. uh, <laughs> now my phone's falling over. <laughs> there we go. So, um... Yeah, it's but it's 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 sort of the songs that have been all like forgotten. I think you know, so like the Shell Silverstein songs, the Freakers Ball, and um, like some Alex Harvey songs as well, or Alex Harvey's versions. You know, especially Delilah. Um, like I heard Tom Jones sing that ages ago. And there's a man in Liverpool that all, has introduced me to loads of good music, and uh, when he introduced me to Alex Harvey, I was like, wow, why have I never seen or heard of him? 
and so the versions are sort of that sort of thing, you know. But talking about that, song, you obviously like your rock music. Have you ever seen Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden singing Delilah? No, no. I'll pop that into YouTube. That's something. That's when he went solo back in the nineties, and he right. was on some, some TV show, and there's right. a there's a plane, and he got up and, and sang that. It's like crazy stuff, but <laughs> yeah. No, Bruce and I, I need to have a look at that. Like, because it to me the song, you know, it's about a lassie cheating on you, and you've lost your mind, and you're getting back at her. You don't even care what you do to the point where you kill her. And a lot of people yeah. sing it. Why, why, why? And it's like no, it needs to be why. You need to be raging, you know. So it's just for uh, anger and grit required in it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think that's missing in a lot of the versions I've heard of it. Anyway, apart from. Alex yeah. Harvey's, there's a version he did live, and I think it helps having Zal Clementson with his clown makeup and that, and they're prancing about and things. There's just something about the way they did it that just hooked me instantly, you know? Yeah. So, Rory, your uh, debut album is coming out April 26th. That's yeah. uh, called The Bloody Box. There's 11 songs on it. There is indeed. Where did you, uh, where did you record it? I recorded it uh, with Wee Studio uh, over in Stornoway, so... Um, I was touring with Pete and Diesel and they were sort of taking the piss saying oh you'll never make an album and I had a drama in me before I went on stage I said right I will I'll make an album and then it was sort of like a pressure thing but I'm glad I did it you know because it sort of pushed me to just get my finger out and get something done you know goodness sake man is this moving about the whole time there we go but so I've, not- I've spoke um, briefly with Keith from the Wee Studio he's going to be coming on soon oh, uh, to do an episode as well was it Keith that helped you to record it? Um, so I so recorded with Keith and recorded with the other boy there, Scott. And it was the first day, you know, just jumping in the studio, recording things. That was all right. But it was later on we were messing about with other ideas because we thought, you know, it's a lot of the stuff I'm doing live just now just so people can listen to it elsewhere. So, but like we added different things like backing vocals that obviously I can't do normally and uh guitar solos and there's one of the songs that was written by a pal of mine that he's, he's just sat on for ages so I did a version of that playing the guitar and uh, sent that through as well so it's uh, that's been added on as well but how, how, how do you go about um, how do you go about songwriting so how, how do you how do you go about writing a song from scratch have you got a, a method the the thing is I've scrapped pretty much everything I've written because I, like, I, I'm too young to sing about certain things you know I think you know I don't have the same life experience living in a wee fishing town in Scotland sort of thing but like um, I found uh, there's this thing like I like listening to music like instrumentals and then thinking what lyrics would I put to that and then I've just found it sort of you know if it, sometimes if I'm sitting jamming that's all right, but sometimes I'll sort of listen to a song and I think, oh, this is what the vocals would be. And then I would sort of base, like, change all the chords and, like, do something totally different myself. But, like I said, everything's been scrapped because I just don't know what to sing about, you know. And then there's been people that have seen some rough copies that are like, that's all right. But when you're doing nothing but stewing and thinking about it, you're like, oh, fuck that, that's no use, you know. I so. Sometimes you're maybe a little bit too close to it that you need to take a step back or someone else. Yeah. Their yeah. perspective on it. Yeah, totally. No, um, I, like I said, I haven't really... I don't, don't know if that's the... I'm the best one to answer that question because I keep <laughs> scrapping things, so I don't know if that's any use. But but did you like the recording process? Did you like creating something out of nothing? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like... the. I think the thing that happens to me is I'll be like driving back from a gig or something and there'll just be a hook in my head and then uh, I'll just like get a voice memo on and then like just there's the amount of stuff on my phone but it's just like like that you know and at the time I'm like this is a really good idea and then I listen to it later on I'm like what the hell is that you know so it's that sort of thing but but uh, so you enjoy the process which one, having done both now, do you prefer writing and recording to performing live, or are they, are they just completely different from each other? I think they're very different from each other. Like personally, um, I, I, it's weird. I see some of the gigs where I've been booed, like because I'm fishing for the booze. You know, like uh, it's not like it's going so bad that I'm 
getting booed. Like sometimes it, it pr probably is, but like the the last time I was playing in, or well, a while ago when I was playing in Inverness, there was a load of people wanting Scottish football songs. So I thought it'd be funny to do an eight minute rendition of uh, Three Lions. So uh, every time they asked, they're like, "Sing something else." I changed key and did it like an octave, like a, just a semitone higher. Oh, semitone higher! And if they learnt to shut up, I would stop, you know. But um, I don't know. I sort of thrive in negativity. But like when you're playing live, and especially if the sound is good, um, I did a wee tour in Germany, and we used like small equipment and that. And the guy was sort of like, "Oh, it's, it's missing the feel and that." And then we went to a bar, and they had subs, and that alone just it like turns you into something else, you know? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. The the writing stuff is never, f I don't know, fun. It's fun if a good idea is coming together. But for me, I'm on my own. So it's not like I'm writing it with a band and we're jamming and going, oh, sh that works, that works. That has happened. Like, I've played with a couple of bands and that happens and that's a nice feeling, but I don't think it ever uh, compares to playing live and having a good gig. Do you think that you remain... Solo, or or do you see yourself maybe at some point down the line forming a band around the act that you've got now? I think forming a band, yeah, it's getting to the point now where I'm really limited with what I'm doing. So there's just so many, especially when I'm listening to the, like these bands like System of Down and all these other things, you know. And like for me, everything has to be like there's no syncopation. It's just the whole time, so I can't go. There's nothing like that, you know? And there's so many ideas that would rely on having a drummer um, or even a bass player as well. Even though I can do the basses, because I have to hit the kick with the bass at the same time, like, the, there's no, like, runs that can be done or anything. So, yeah, I think I would definitely drift towards having a band. So it's... Living in a remote area is tricky for yeah. finding people to play with. And then, because I'm... Um, such a weird person. I don't know if that many people are keen to play with me. So. Well, that's the thing. I start, starting a band is good, but uh, even more so than talent is the personalities. Trying to get the, the personalities to match that yeah, these uh, uh, can stand being in a band with each other and then you've got to leave egos at the door because uh, mm -hmm. that can destroy it as well. But uh, obviously you've done small gigs, you've done big gigs. Mm -hmm. At this point, in your career, do you get nervous going on stage or are you happy with you or know that you are capable of performing? Is it more to do with maybe you want a good sound? It's if the gigs I get the most nervous for is when there's a family member there. It could be a small pub with 30, 30 people there and I see two family members coming out like, oh Jesus. Or it could be a festival where it's rammed and I just spot them. I'm like, ugh. Like, the thought of people I know that I'm going to see later on watching me is way more nerve-wracking than playing to, like, thousands of strangers, if that makes sense. No, that, that's fine. I mean, obviously, I've not I've not played festivals or that, but I know what you're meaning. Like, playing in the pubs, I, I, I've been playing the pubs for 15 years, yeah. and the most stressed gigs is when there's a fan that you know coming yeah. along. I don't know why that is. But it's weird. Well, they're there to support you, which is odd. And then, in a backwards sense, it's more that like I don't know. Like, like one of the gigs, it turned out being one of the most fun ones. It was in a bar in Liverpool that sort of closed now. My granny came in, and I was like, "Oh, fuck! That's half my set out the window," you know. But she ended up like loving it and heckling me and stuff, and it turned into this whole thing, you know. Well, it's, so. it depends what kind of friends you've got. If you've got friends like mine, they, they come along to heckle you. Oh, I, yeah. Well, I've got a bit. I've got, I've, yeah, I've definitely got more friends that are there to heckle me. So, wee wagon wheel. <laughs> I was just about to fucking say that. Honestly, it's rife constant. Uh, so, so, obviously, like normally, I'll, I'll ask people that come on if we know each other, how did we meet, all that sort of thing. We've never met before. Mm. Um, I can't remember how how I came across your name. I've seen you support Pete and Diesel at the Barrowlands. Mm hmm. But I knew about you at least a year before that. And I, I, it must have just been something that came up online, maybe. Uh, I'm, right. not quite, I'm not quite sure what it was, but how did you cross paths with the Pete and Diesel guys? Um, the first time I met them in person was at a festival in Gerloch, uh, the, the Gerloch Gathering. And I was chatting away to them and that, and uh, I was chatting away to Innes, 
and then not long after that they switched management and the manager that's got them also has the pub that I'm playing in tonight and that I play in during the week so sorry I'm just adjusting this thing before it falls over there we go so it was just through that and then uh, because like they were doing another tour coming up they sort of suggested me and I think some of them had heard me play as well so uh, I just sort of gelled like that the manager guy said, try this guy, see what happens. And I think it helped that it's not like taking a whole support band where you have to pay for their travel to a couple of vehicles and like four other hotel rooms. They're like, this is just one guy that's keen to come along sort of thing. So I think it just sort of worked out for both of us, you know. So, so uh, uh, Rory, but we're obviously relatively early on 2024. So what is your plans for the rest of the year? I mean, I know you've got the album that's about to come out. If they just released the album and get gigging. Is that the, the main plan? Um, well, I, for me, I need to get my finger out and start figuring out what I'm doing with the second album. Um, so as, as much as I'm gigging uh, through <coughs> this year, the album launch tour that we're doing, it's with another band, the Lorettes. Yep. Uh, oh shit, don't know if I was met. Oh well, there you go. Ta um, so I'm doing, <laughs> doing a tour with them. Um, and that's going to be post-festival season because they want to sort of drum up more of an audience. They're doing well getting festival gigs and that. But yeah. I think with myself, it's quite tricky because people film the... Like, it's nuts. I watched videos from maybe four years ago. And to me, it's a totally different performance from what I'm doing now. Even though, like, some of the songs are the same or whatever, I'm very shy, you know, and very, like, uh, introverted. So sort of... You know, I'd go up, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a Canadian band dance, blah, blah, blah. Now, I might do that, but I'll have a, like, sarcastic tone to it and stuff, you know? Aye, it's like, it's like you're channeling your inner Bill, Billy Connolly. Aye, or, aye, or, uh, what do you call him, Robbie Shepherd sort of thing, you know, just putting that full thing on and then having that other side of it in there too. But, um, no, I think get this second album worked on, figure out how I'm going to do it as well, because... A lot of people are saying, oh, it works really well when it's just you and the accordion. But for me, there's not enough variety in the sound. Even though people say the songs, you don't know what the hell you're going to get. But to me, I only have a limited way I can play them. So it's like someone having a Jew's harp, but playing loads of songs. You know what I mean? He can play something from uh, like very classical music, some Mozart, and then he does some system of down, but it's still gong, 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 gong. You know what I mean? There, you can't really do that much more. So... Yeah. I think Both. it's setting out who I'm going to play with, who's keen to blow the arse out of it, essentially. But as much as I am, I muck about and things, when it comes to band practices and shit, we're there to work, you know? And uh, I can be a bit of a... bit of a uh, micromanaging arsehole, <laughs> you know? So. I think maybe... Um, I think you, you need to be like that, though, in order, for, in order for anything to get done properly. You mm -hmm. need to... You know, obviously it's just yourself. If you're playing that band, you need someone that takes control, that steers the ship. Yeah. No, I'm, well, the thing is, the I'm so in, like, for input, you know, like, um, when we were recording, you know, there was one of the songs where it's a song a friend of the family's wrote, and it's about, like, poaching stags. It's one of the softest songs. It's the last one on the album. <laughs> yep. um, and it's a song he wrote about, like, poaching. And I added the sound of, like, a rifle been fired as the snare and all this stuff and like I wanted it to sound like what you were doing was part of the song as well and then we were listening and then one of the boys when we were recording because the snare was just too it was there too often and then yeah. people just suggested right well let's have it when the vocals are on it's not there but as soon as there's a gap at the end of the fourth bar we'll put it in yep. so and the, the I used to play in a band called the Rogues who did like Irish punk rock covers and stuff yep. and I, I would happily listen to any idea, you know? But yeah. the the thing you have to learn is your ideas are going to be shot down and they'll be brought on, so you have to be ready for both, you know? So there was a couple like of things, like playing in other bands as well, where if someone came out with an idea, they're like, oh, well, fine, I'm never giving another idea again. It's like, that's not the fucking point. We're just trying to do the right thing, you know? I so, suppose that, that's, the, that's ego talking, though. If you can ah, leave that... Totally, that yeah. Or, and simply, this is the ideas we've got. Let's pick the best ideas to make the best songs possible. That That's what you're after. Yeah. So, uh, Rory, we have been pretty serious up to this point so far with all the technical questions and that. So, to end things 
Uh -huh. I'm going to put on questions. Okay, so question number one. If you could go back in time and anywhere in the world, if you could go back in time and attend any one gig or concert, what would be that one gig or concert you wish that you could have attended? To watch? To like listen to watch, the band. Uh, to watch, aye. To watch, to jump on, jump back off the stage. Oh, probably something like Live Aid or something, eh? Something massive like that with Queen. Yeah. Just, just the atmosphere of that and like, or even that uh, Limp Biscuit when it was the, the re, like, rebirth of Woodstock. Everyone's like, it was a fucking disaster. I was like, that looks fantastic. You know, something mad. Oh, 1990. Aye, right, something yeah. where just. The threat of death was looming, you know? That tickles me. If you ever saw, if you ever saw the Woodstock 1994, uh, Green Day were the big band playing. And, right. uh, go and check that out. They've got, they, they created their own mudslide. It, 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 was, it looked pretty uh, fun. Uh, yeah, no, something, something mad where just the atmosphere is good or even dangerous in the audience, but the yeah. band is just killing it as well. That's, you know... It, I wouldn't go as much as I appreciate like other music. A gig where the band played really well and everyone was sitting in seats nice and prim and proper. That, that doesn't tickle me at all. Like, So, another question. You obviously play the accordion, you're singing. Is there an instrument you wish that you could play that you, that you don't play? Um, I wish I was better at the guitar. Um, I, I mess about like playing chords and stuff and like I need a capo all the time, but... Uh, just when you see people shredding at a guitar, what can beat that? Like, you know, yeah, like a Van Halen, but on the accordion. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. just um, I, I love the bass as well. I only bought myself a bass not that long ago, and I was not not that it's easy. I'm not saying this at all. So like, I I listened to Primus, and um, is it Les Claypool that plays with Primus? Aye. And just watching him at the age he is now, still like doing that slapping, that sound is just infectious. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, I'd love to. It's all guitars, slap bass, or uh, like normal yeah. guitar. I had, had someone on an episode previously, and they play bass, and they were talking about learning bass. Their, their main influence was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I'm like, oh, you've picked one of the most difficult bass players. To be influenced by like, ah, uh, absolutely yeah. outstanding, but uh, but pretty cool. Uh, another question then for you. So there is millions and millions of amazing songs that have been created over the years. What's the one song that you wish you could have been sat in the recording studio behind the recording desk to witness the song being recorded? Oof. Maybe uh, War Pigs, Black Sabbath. Yeah, like that. yeah. I don't know if that was live in the studio or if it was. was that? Uh, oh. No, I don't. I don't know because that would have been way back in the like seventies. Aye, aye. Yeah, just seeing their ideas come together and like obviously Ozzy Osbourne just being a psycho, like yeah, back when he was like sniffing ants and everything. <laughs> aye. <laughs> and then, well, last question for you, uh, Mount Rushmore. Who is your four? bands or musicians who are the four whether it be songwriting whether it be performance whether it be the overall package who are the four at the top of your list that you just see as perfection for yourself well four heads Rolf Harris Gary, Gary Glitter uh, <laughs> no I'm joking um, oh hell I don't know huh? that's a tricky one just trying to think of people that I see all the time I thought you were thinking people that weren't pedos. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I've got to have them up. I, uh, no, no, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Uh, like someone that deserves that shrine. Shrine, right. just for... On you go, sorry. I'm saying just for yourself. Oh, for me, if I drove by and I was like, yeah. Ah, that would be probably pretty bland, pretty boring, like uh, Freddie Mercury. Uh, Maybe Serge from a uh, System of a Day, just to mix it up a bit. Hmm. I don't know. That's a tricky one, huh? Should so have done my research. 
so many good artists out there, it's hard to kind of narrow it down, especially Aye. if you like all different styles as well. Aye. Aye. J- Jimmy Shand and uh, Gordon Patillo. There you go. <laughs> Get some Scottish artists up there, why not? There you go. No, but, but thank you, Rory, for coming on. It's been a, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, next time, Glasgow, um, I'll keep a wee eye on you on social media and uh, we'll maybe get a wee catch up next time you're in Glasgow. But for anybody that's out there, obviously the new album's out 26th of April. Check yourself out. Here it is right there. Check yeah. it out on uh, social media. <laughs> And uh, you can obviously, you can buy it, you can download it, you can stream it, all the usual bits and pieces, but make sure you do that, because uh, we've got to get that, that album out there. Sounds, man. No bother. But oh. uh, cool, man. Rory, I wish you all the, the luck in the future as well. Namaste. Right. Cheers. Wow. Well,